Okay, well, um, it's afternoon for me. Good afternoon. Um, some of you it's morning and some of you it's much later in the day. Uh, this is April 1st. No April Fool's here. I am not a fan of April Fool's jokes. Uh, this is, you know, I don't know if you know how bizarre this is that I'm looking at my screen. I see me. I see my studio. And I have to assume there's some of you out there. Um, but I don't know that for sure yet. At the very end, I will check for uh, the variety of questions that come up, and I want to make sure I leave time for that so that I can uh, answer your questions directly. The, um, it's month four, and we're finally ready to start making trees on our small houses. And once we get the trees on the small houses, then you can join them together into the circle. Uh, of the circle of ring of 32 small houses that of course you've put into 16 pairs. Um, and that gets exciting. And then uh, first of May, we get the inner and the outer roads. And in May, you'll be making your entire center go together. And that's when things really um, are fun and exciting. And you start to actually see, number one, you can do this. Uh, number two, that it's flat or flat enough uh, that you can get it all put together and um, that it, you will feel so much better when you have your middle together. At least I did. Um, so the uh, hot new news that I just got, breaking news that I just got less than an hour ago, is that the remaining kits that have been ordered have come in to the um, Quilt Shop store. Uh, there are some, uh, there are not many, there are some of the art history background kits, the, that background like mine that everybody loves so much. There are uh, just a couple of ones that have the alternative background, the confetti background, the white with the little black dots. And then the um, alternative, they have just some kits that have no background at all and you're ad able to add your own background. So if you requested to be notified, you should be receiving an email right away. If you didn't request and now you've decided you want them jump into the store and uh, order them because when these are gone, there are absolutely no more available. And for those of you who have searched out Art History 101 all over the internet for months, you know that that's true. Um, okay, so let's talk about the um, alignment of the small houses, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Wendy recommends you put them together, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Uh, if you read my blog today, you might know one of the reasons why I didn't do that. When I was working on this quilt under a very short deadline of time, I um, hadn't, I only had one month's pattern at a time. So I was working on, I made the 16 small houses and I knew that, of course, based on a list that there were going to be 16 more in March. So I didn't know that they were going to be too different three and four would be different from one and two. So I just kept making small houses one and two. So lo and behold, when I got month three's pattern, I already had like 14 more ones and twos done. And I was not about to say, yeah, can't use those. Um, because remember, I was under deadline. So I only made a total of eight four small house three and small house four. And I put them around my center uh, in each ones in each quadrant and you'd have to really look hard to to determine who was where and which one doesn't belong and no one looking at your quilt next year is ever going to know that the houses were particularly different um, so you can decide. I used colors to make my uh, original decision as I put them on the wall. And then I'd look at them and go, oh, I got two purples there nearby. Or, oh, look, those orange, I got three orange roofs in a, all together. How did that happen? And so I moved them around until I was satisfied with them. Uh, putting them on the wall is very helpful. Taking a picture is really helpful. And then looking at the picture sometime later, an hour later, 20 minutes later, the next day, because you'll see things in the photo that you didn't see and still don't see with your naked eye. So um, that's just kind of the gist of it. One of the questions that comes up a lot is about the sizes of these blocks. Nowhere, or they're, they're not blocks, they're houses. Okay. Nowhere in the pattern is there specified what the exact finish size of these units are supposed to be. The, um, and the patterns are hand drawn. So there can be some variation. And of course, some of you have had the one inch problem that would add to variation as well. So all I know is I managed to make this quilt completely all together with the patterns, the way they were pre presented to you 
and I never measured anything on the houses. I didn't try to figure out what's this supposed to be. As long as mine were approximately the same size, and that's about 11 inches tall, um, I did a little forum post showing with a picture of the two there's two of them sewn together and what the measurements would be at the bottom and the top. It's very hard to explain this in a way that everybody would hear what I'm saying because there's a curve at the top and the bottom. So if you tried to measure including the curve, it's just not going to work. So I did from outside to outside. I put two photos up, including a um, ruler on top of each one. So you can see if you're really um, concerned about the sizes. When you sew these together, you have to sew an accurate quarter of an inch seam allowance. That's just critical. And then the next thing is that you need to press that seam allowance open as flat as humanly possible, just to make sure that it's um, you don't have a pleat or a tuck, which would take up some of your fabric. Um, the Okay, so that's kind of the, the basics of it. I'm going to play just uh, the supplemental video. The other day, um, I looked at the videos that I did that start with me and that, you know, were my turquoise necklace and the, the blue flower shirt. They were made last summer. Um, my son, who's a professional videographer, did those for me. And I neglected to tell him he should have a handheld camera. And he had two stationary cameras. So all the time when I'm looking down at my table surface and saying, this is how this is and this is how this is, I realize you can't see that. So I went ahead um, just a few days ago and did a quick little six min minute supplement that I would recommend you watch first if you haven't seen the, the longer video first, just because then when you see the longer video, which is about 12 minutes long, you'll actually see, oh yes, that will, she showed us that a few minutes ago with that other, what it looked like, the other picture. So that's why I did the supplemental trees video and I'm gonna show that to you. This is where we start using the bias tape. The, um, the black quarter inch double fold bias tape from Clover is great with a fusible on it, very fast. Um, but some people are using a dark background and the black simply wouldn't show up. So a lot of them, have, those folks I know are making their own. You can, sometimes you can find this bias already made in a silver or gold. Um, and that's another alternative, but you could make your own. Just this morning on the forum, and I do check the forum a lot, all the time, okay? Um, there was someone who had posted that she used a double needle to sew her black bias tape, the quarter inch tape, in that it worked great, that it she she gave what some there were two different people talking about it. So one of them also said what her measurements were and how she played with that. Of course, you must remember that you need to change to a uh, wide a zigzag throat plate instead of the single hole stitch plate if you're going to use double needle. But, um, it, and I thought that was brilliant and that never would have occurred to me. So uh, we learn, teachers learn just as much from our students sometimes as we're able to share with, with all of you. So that was a great idea. That certainly would have made uh, half the work perhaps once you got it figured out what your measurements needed to be. Um, and I thought that was terrific black thread and a black bobbin and double needle and sew down both sides at once. How smart is that? So just, just another thought of things that I learned. So, okay, let me see if I can get us to the video. <coughs> I'm just going to show you a few of the things that are a little hard to see in the video because I did not have my, um, have a camera over my shoulder. So the first thing is this layout guide for the trees. I printed it on vellum, which is tracing paper. I could, had no trouble putting it through my printer and just printed one copy of those. Then I could see there's a center line right here and I could see, um, place the center line about in the center of my two houses that are sewn together. And then I used the uh, quick bias clovers, quick bias quarter inch um, tape. It's got fusible on the back. It's double fold. It makes it great and easy to use. And you can make your own if you'd like. Uh, this is just what I uh, used. I cut a two and a half inch piece, a three and a half inch piece, and a nine and a half inch piece. They were all longer than I needed, but that allowed me to place them and then I could trim off the extra part. So I just used them. A tracing paper to give myself a guideline as to where I want it. You can decide how you can see I made this one a little bit swoopier. None of my trees are exactly the same, just like they wouldn't be in nature. So uh, I had no trouble putting them where I wanted. I got the first two placed and I pressed those with a hot dry iron first. Then getting the long trunk, you start at the bottom and you need to cover these two raw edges. 
all top, uh, three of the ridges at the top will be covered by the treetop, but you, the bottom uh, lower edges of these two shorter trunks need to be covered by this long, um, very, very long trunk. So I placed it where I wanted it. I pressed here first to make sure I had those covered, and then I finished pressing all the way on those. So that's just how I use the um, uh, vellum tracing paper guide. I also showed and talked about this in the video, my test. I used white thread for my test so I could see what it looked like, but I was going to use black thread top and bobbin. Double blanket stitch, a single blanket stitch, some zigzag in different layouts, and I decided let me try the straight stitch. It was so much easier, and I could leave my single hole throat plate on, and this is, uh, I just decided that I really liked this pretty quick. This is a 2.0 stitch. I lengthened it to two and a half, and then I came down here and lengthened it again to 3.0, and I decided the two and a half was the winner. So that's what I used for making the placement there. The next thing that I'll show you is the making the treetop template. That looks like this sheet of paper here. Um, the templates for the trees, it already says that you need to add the quarter inch seam allowance to the lower edge, but it says in the instructions that the top edge already has the seam allowance. So I found it very helpful just to keep myself straight. I wrote top up there and I drew in the seam allowance so I could quickly see at a glance that this is the lower edge does not include the seam allowance and the top edge does. What I did with this was I printed this on a sheet of my freezer paper. I could, by folding it, I could see that I had enough paper that I could get two of these out. I didn't have to sh print two sheets of paper to get the this template made out of freezer paper. I cut along that line. I just pinned those together. You could staple them or pin them. You want to stack them so that you have waxy side down on both sheets of paper. So this is the matte side, the piece that was underneath. If I just folded it in half, I now have waxy to waxy or plastic coating to plastic coating. So I just simply cut this piece, the lower piece of paper and turned it over so that I had matte, matte, and underneath is plastic coating, plastic coating. And you could staple or pin those together, cut those out, and then you have this template right here that's plastic coating on the bottom. Now I've used this 16 times, so there's very little coating left but it worked just fine for what I needed to do. You obviously could um, make this out of temp of plastic if you wanted, but how many of these trees are you ever going to make? So I've got this ready to go. Then I simply took my uh, two different green fabrics. This one's already been cut, but I laid it out on the piece of green fabric and just used a mechanical pencil and drew the lower line and drew the top line too so I knew where to cut. And once I cut it out, it, my I had um, eight of these and eight of the darker color green. And this was just a practice piece for, because this piece wasn't gonna work too well at the bottom, so it was a good one for me to test with the threads. Um, then all I had to do here was finger press, press under on the pencil line and did that all around. And then I was ready to put these together. You just wanna make sure when you start that the edge on this side lines up with the edge here, and I would put a pin there to secure that. I would put a pin, get that placed. Okay. And I came over to the other side. I folded this in half to find the center, so I knew where to line up my centers. I'm gonna do the same thing over here and just get this top edge lined up. Okay, and pin that there. And, and that's just really all I needed to do. And when I was ready to sew, I could put a couple more pins or just sew slowly and turn the edge under. I'd already pre-folded them, finger press them. Uh, you could hand applique this if you prefer, uh, or machine applique. You could put a decorative stitch on it if you wanted to. I just wanted the fastest method for me, which was gonna be the straight line. So the thread that I used for it, I tested a couple different threads and I really found that this was a great thread. This is Quilter Select 80 weight, the finer thread, and it was the perfect color. It's color 275 and that color just blended nicely with the dark one and with the light one. It just worked great. I didn't have to use two different thread colors and I put it in the bobbin as well just so I wouldn't have to worry about any kind of tension issues. 
Um, so that was just the practice that I did there to check for thread color. And I would sew each of these, just all you have to do is sew the lower edge, do this one and continue on with all 16 pairs till you have them all done. So that's what you weren't able to see and I hope that that helps now. Okay, so I hope that that's just uh, the, being able to see those things. Then when you watch the little bit longer video, the 12 minute one, um, you'll know what I'm talking about when I'm indicating these various steps. <clears throat> and the blog has written instructions. I, uh, some people prefer words, some prefer videos, and so I do both, and they're up there. The, um, with that cutting of the paper, um, I wanted to make sure that I, you understood I only printed one sheet of freezer paper. That one was placed, the, the template was placed on the paper just well enough that I was able to get cut it so that I could um, have two layers of the freezer paper, uh, which is what Wendy's instructions tell you to do. But I didn't want to have to waste a whole other sheet of freezer paper if I didn't have to. Um, oh, another uh, one of my student friends who is taking a year-long class that I'm doing right now locally, uh, she posted on the forum today that it made more sense to her to draw the lower line um, uh, seam allowance in. So when she went to cut out this piece, she drew in the quarter inch on the bottom edge and then was able to stack four layers of fabric together and just draw around it and stitch through all of those at once. And then I guess she just eyeballed turned under the quarter inch as she went along. And she that was much faster for her. And that's great because my motto by now, you know, is I want the fastest method that gives me the result I want because I am um, a needle turn applicator, hand applicator. Uh, I don't even think hard about it. I said, well, I'm just gonna draw the pencil line and then turn it under. I eyeballed my quarter inch seam as I cut it out so that I would have that edge to there. But um, whatever way floats your boat and gets the job done for you is the way that you should do it. Uh, no right or wrong way, whatever gets you um, happy with the results is, is what we're after. Um, okay, so. You get all of these on, you got 16 pairs, and then you've got your uh, trees on, and now it's time to sew them together. In a perfect world, ideally, those treetops will match exactly at the top, um, but I just looked at mine while you were watching the video, and I've got some where the treetops are not exactly on there, but you'd have to really look, and once you quilt the swirly designs or whatever kind of quilty tree designs you put on there they're not really noticeable uh, and I didn't agonize over all that stuff it depends on how carefully you have sewn that middle seam allowance that and how carefully you have cut out the pieces remember again that there's only three things we can do wrong in the piecing process the cutting the sewing and the pressing so um, we get those things on there and then when you line them up as I said, in a perfect world, those the treetops just kind of circle, you know, half circle to half circle to half circle. Um, and I gave you on my blog an up close picture of mine. I didn't vet it to see if it was good enough. I just like it's what it is. It's done, and um, I'll have to go back and look at that now that I've told you to look. But you can see whether or not mine are uh, perfect enough for you because you get to decide how perfect something has to be. It is your quilt, and you get to decide. Uh, so ideally, once you've got those all done and you sew all 32 houses, 16 pairs in into one circle, hopefully it's circular and it's flat, more or less, as more or less, as, however it has to be for you. If it's not, I write about this in the blog, the number, there's two places where we tend to go wrong when we start to sew two blocks together and these houses you know, take the place of sewing blocks together. That's when we start and when we end. So I always use a leader ender, a little scrap of fabric. Thread Kitty is another name. My good buddy Margot calls them starty stoppies, which I think is just an adorable name for just a little scrap of fabric folded in half. Sew on that first, and then it lets me lead right into sewing an accurate quarter of an inch at the top. And then at the bottom, pay attention all the way down. I think we have a tendency as we get close to the bottom to leave go, to forget about it, to be reaching over to get the next thing that you want to sew. And you really need to sew accurately all the way down, quarter inch at the top, quarter inch at the bottom, and a quarter inch throughout the middle. So just pay attention to that. And I think that I find that a, a starty stoppy is really helpful. I did chain piece these one right after the other. So I only needed a starty at the very beginning and a stoppy at the, at the end. And then, um, so you put 
two pairs together and those are four and then you put two fours together and that's an eight and you do that a total of four times until you have all 32 of the houses that go together. Um, we do love to see your pictures on the forum. Put them on there. The, some people have struggled, but the, I did a little post about how to post the pictures. It's pretty straightforward. Um, the only problem is if you've got a gigundo picture that's way too big, then it just won't happen. It, it won't get uploaded. So um, I'll have to verify, but the last time five megabytes was the, the maximum size for a photo. But I haven't had any trouble putting the, the couple of pictures up that... Um, on the forum that I wanted to put up there for you. Um, okay, uh, I'm going to go to your questions here in just a minute because I'm hoping that there are some. Next month we will do the um, the inner and the outer roads and I've got some good tips on how to make those uh, possible and how to do it. We make an inner road that then you sew to the Mariner's Compass we make an outer road that you then sew to this ring of small houses that you're working on this month. And um, ultimately you will join the ring of small houses to the inner road that is attached to the Mariner's Compass. Uh, there's lots of places to line up and um, I, I believe me, I worry that it was going to fit and I just pinned and pinned and pinned and everything fit just right. And I went slow and um, got it, put together and went, well, how about that? It all fits together. So uh, let me see if I can find your questions now. Uh, okay, let me see where I want to start up here at the beginning and go down. Hi, hello, hi. Hi, 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 hi. Oh, Alaska. Bet you it's a little cold in Alaska. And then there's Arizona. First we have Alaska, then we have Arizona. Rondi and Livermore. I feel like I know Rondi. All righty. Arkansas, Washington, do, 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 do. And then the, the post with a link. John's already put that up there. A few kits came in. This is the very last we can get. So there's a link right there for you. You can get to those. Hey, Margo says, hey. Um, do, 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 do. How do we get the patterns? All right. Uh, Gloria wants to know. You join as a star member, and then you go to block of the month. The patterns are under documents. First, you come to each month, and you have videos, and tab over one little tab to documents, and all the patterns are there. Yakima. Um, do, 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 do. Uh -huh. Somebody else has answered her, too. Alex, patterns are free for star. Oh, okay. Do, do, do. Um, how do you print on vellum? My printer protests. Um, you'd have to check your printer settings, and sometimes YouTube can be our best friend today. You can find suggestions on there. It, a lot of times there's a printer setting for thick paper, thin paper, and you may have to, to use that. Um, I did get, I was printing something else last week, and I got two pieces of real thin tracing paper stuck and jammed up. Well, two different times, the same paper jammed up inside, and I was an inky mess for a couple of days. Um, okay, try it on parchment, okay. And and you, you may not need the template to help that. It's really, your trees are just there to be your trees. Put them where you want them, and um, it's not important, and Wendy says this too, that you have matched exactly. Uh, another person used double needle. That is great. Twin idea. Uh, twin needle is a great idea. Ah, great question. Linda wanted to know, do you plan on trimming away fabric under the tree? No, I did not. I knew I was going to be machine quilting this. It was just one more step that I didn't take. Um, but you certainly could if you wanted to. I guess if you had a light tree, there are some people who are doing a seasonal layout where they might have some snow covered trees. And um, if they had a dark background with the that shadowed through to the, the very light tree, that would make sense to, to trim that excess away. Um, but that's entirely up to you. Uh, Laura wants to know how wide is the road, and I couldn't begin to tell you without measuring it. Um, I, I'd have to look, and we'll cover all of that in May. Um, should we stitch on the top edge of the trees? The... Um, I, I didn't, um, it, like she's talking about, Chris wants to know about stay stitching, I think, along the top edge of the trees. 
The if you found that it was a problem, um, you could, but I'm, I I don't believe I did. Uh, print on tracing paper, washi tape. Um, another question about did I cut away the excess background behind it, which I didn't do. Um, easy to trace by hand. Um, well, someone says there's an if there's an eighth of an inch difference in the houses, should I trim or wait before adding the green? Just start at the bottom, a pin from the bottom up, so that that treetop is going to cover that eighth of an inch of, um, short, um, one side being shorter than the other. You'll never see it. It's covered by treetop. Um, so that should work just fine. There's another question about finding the pattern. Um, of course, you have to be logged in as a star member. If you try to go to the patterns and you think you're logged in and it tells you that you don't have access, you're not logged in. So I've had to a couple times um, log out and log back in. Particularly, this happens to me on the forum. And of course, right now on the forum, you don't see my face. So whenever I answer you, I um, remember to type my name under there so you know who's this gray silhouette that's telling you something. Um, so that's the, the situation there. So, okay, I think that's all the questions that I see at the moment. And I'll go back to here. Okay. Um, that's about all that I have for you today. The, uh, the forum's a great place to ask questions. And again, I'll say to you, please don't try to send me private messages through the site. I saw one today that was written four days ago. I didn't see it. It's not something that I'm going to see easily. It was a basic question that gets asked on the forum all the time. Ask those questions on the forum and other people who know the answer besides me can give you the answer. This is, um, we've got thousands of people doing this quilt all over the world and everybody's on a different time zone. So when I'm sleeping, someone else in Australia is wide awake and uh, can answer a question for you. But sending me, a, um, I, I even got two private messages sent through customer service, you know, ask Barbara to tell me such and such. Um, and it's, if you'll use the forum and get used to it, that's the place <clears throat> to uh, get all of your questions answered. Um, okay, well, uh, I think that's it for today. The next one, uh, we go live each month on the first Thursday of each month. So next month, it will be May 6th is the first Thursday. But the blog will be up on the 1st of May um, with very detailed instructions on how I did the inner roads. Um, you will, that's when you will use the black and the um, cream or white fabrics to, to make your um, inner roads and outer roads. So they're, and they're different. They're not the exact same size. Each one is different, of course. So, um, but be, sh be sure that you look at those bits of information. All of these resources, my blog, uh, this live, the videos that I do, and the written instructions from Wendy, every one of them has a part to play in helping you be successful. And I've said it several times that we want you to be successful. We, I absolutely want you to be successful. So um, I hope that you will um, enjoy this and uh, please post your pictures. Uh, you know, there's some people doing wool. There are people doing 75% smaller, 60% smaller, and they're starting to put their pictures up. Uh, there's, it's just a lot of neat stuff out there. And uh, so I hope that you'll take advantage to see what other people are doing and share yours with us as well. So um, that's it for now. So uh, until next month, it's a wrap.